Uh, Glenn, uh, what did we miss in this courtroom today? Well, you know, I would say for the first three quarters of the hearing, uh, Judge Carl Nichols kept us guessing. Uh, he asked probing questions of John Crabb, the prosecutor. He asked equally probing questions of David Schoen, the defense attorney. And it really wasn't until near the end of the hearing as he was going through his findings that he said, look, the reason I originally stayed Judge uh, um, Steve Bannon's sentence was because I thought he might have a viable legal issue on appeal. However, when the three-judge panel of the D.C. Federal Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously and in a full-throated way basically rejected that legal issue, Judge uh, Nichols at that point said, I have no basis to continue to stay the execution of his sentence. I am accordingly uh, issue, or ordering him to report to the Federal Bureau of Prisons by July 1st to begin his four-month sentence. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, Lawrence, because that seemed to make Steve Bannon unhappy, but it really made Steve Bannon's lawyer unhappy because at that moment, he made a beeline for the podium. And I can tell you in federal court, um, ordinarily you wait for the judge to invite you to the podium. He raised his voice. He got angry. He began yelling. And uh, the judge had to basically shut him down and say that is no way to behave in the courtroom. So he may have been performing for Steve Bannon or perhaps another uh, audience, but um, it, it's pretty clear that Judge Nichols finally decided enough was enough. There's no reason for Steve Bannon to remain at liberty, and he will be uh, now joining Peter Navarro, perhaps in the same facility, perhaps not, because Peter Navarro is serving his sentence for the identical contempt of Congress crimes. And these four months uh, might be the shortest sentence that Steve Bannon gets. He's facing money laundering charges in New York City, uh, a case brought by Alvin Bragg. It's being heard, by the way, by Judge Juan Mershon, who, of course, was, has been busy with the Trump case. Now he's not so busy. That could speed up the movement of the Bannon case in New York City. Uh, and there, uh, that's a case uh, where Donald Trump actually pardoned Steve Bannon for the federal version of that case. He'd already been accused and, and indicted federally, but Donald Trump issued a pardon to eliminate the federal case. Alvin Bragg picked it up as a state case. Yeah, and it's nice to see once Donald Trump did that enormous favor for Steve Bannon and, you know, pardoned him for charges that at their core involved Steve Bannon stealing from Trump supporters, claiming he was going to be using the money to build a wall, all the while just lining his own pockets. And, you know, virtually with one foot out the door, Donald Trump pardoned him. Fortunately, the New York state authorities then picked it up began their investigation in earnest, and it has taken some time. But, you know, ironically, for a four-month prison term might end up being the least of Steve Bannon's problems. Uh, the president today was asked in Normandy uh, by David Muir about uh, his son being on trial to now, Hunter Biden. Let's listen to that. How important do you think this conviction should be in this race for president? That's for the public to decide. But one thing for certain is stop undermining the rule of law. Look, he got a fair trial. The jury spoke like they speak in all cases, and it should be respected. As we sit here in Normandy, uh, your son Hunter is on trial. And I know that you cannot speak about an ongoing uh, federal prosecution. But let me ask you, will you accept the jury's outcome, their verdict, no matter what it is? Yes. And have you ruled out a pardon for your son? Yes. Glenn, a pretty big contrast uh, between Joe Biden's respect for judicial process and Donald Trump. You know, talk about showing the true character of a man. You know, I was always impressed, Lawrence, that when he became president, he had every right and indeed, the normal course of business is to ask for the resignation of all U.S. attorneys and appoint your own U.S. attorneys that share your you know, criminal justice priorities. He left a Republican-appointed U.S. attorney in place to continue uninterrupted the investigation of his own son. And by all accounts, he has done nothing to interfere. And he is on record as saying, 
I would not pardon my son if he were criminally convicted. I'll tell you, that feels to me like where the duties of a president might conflict with the duties of a father. And look at the choice he has made. It's to do the right thing by the rule of law and the right thing by the country. Talk about the measure of the man. I think that tells you everything you need to know about President Biden. Glenn Kirshner, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. And coming up, Florida's Republican Senator Rick Scott voted against contraception yesterday in the United States Senate. 